Well, it is that time of day, on that day of the week, that we talk about the Raw show from Monday night. And my friends, the show is going to go quick because the show was fine. A couple of the finishes were kind of lame, and uh, it's WWE. That's just what you're going to get. So it opened up with a segment setting up Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair for the Raw women's title. Open the show. 20-minute match. Very good match. The talking point, the key to the match, is that Becky ripped off the corner pad, Bianca got sent into it, and then Becky rolled her up and grabbed the tights and pinned her. So, since SummerSlam, since SummerSlam, Bianca has now lost four times to Becky Lynch. And I was baffled because, and he's not wrong, but Dave last night goes, well, that's that's what they're doing to continue the story. I'm like, continue the story? She's beaten her four times. And of course, you know what happens in WWE when you have a baby face and they face the champion four times, and regardless of how it happens, they lose every single solitary time. Becky the Heel gets a giant pop and a huge ovation for cheating to beat Bianca Belair because this system is broken. Becky should not be a heel. It is not helping Bianca Belair at all. Bianca's less over now than she was before this feud with Becky started. So the match was good, but bro, not my promotion. Austin Theory beat Rey Mysterio via DQ. Another lame finish because Dominic is supposed to hit Austin Theory and the ref sees it. But the ref didn't see it, but he disqualified the guy anyway. So, and on top of that, you had Ray and Dominic double-teaming Austin Theory. It's just these damn heel Mysterios. But they're not heels. They're supposed to be baby faces. The match was good. Booking was horrible. Seems to be the theme of this show. We had a Seth Rollins Big E segment with Kevin Owens where Kevin interrupted and basically challenged Big E to a championship match for the main event tonight. We had Queen Zelina and Carmella beating Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash. Eight minutes. This match was not very good. I mean, Rhea and Nikki were doing everything in their power to try to carry this match, but it was just... It looked it looked like a carry job, and the wrestlers that were uh, being carried won, which I'm fine with, actually, because there are zero women's tag teams other than the women's tag team champions. They broke all of them up in the draft. Rhea and Nikki have done nothing now for weeks because there's nothing for them to do. So at least they created a tag team here. They beat the champions, and now we can do some some championship matches. Finn Balor beat Chad Gable. They announced that Chad Gable just graduated valedictorian from college. He's got his degree, and uh, he cuts his really good promo, like one of the better Chad Gable promos of his, of his career, which is not saying much. And uh, he's out there with Finn Balor, who's already a star, you know, there's no there's no need for Finn Balor to beat Chad Gable. You might do something with Chad Gable. Give him a nap. He got beaten. Finn Balor wins. Good match. Very good match. Not pornographic, but a very good match. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode beat the Street Profits. Feel like we've seen this match 50 times. And uh, they were distracted by music. Omos came out. He uh, distracted Ford and the cameraman because the camera missed the finish. And Ziggler ends up pinning him, and then there's a big schmoz with everybody going after Omos, and Omos lays out Riddle, and they're teasing an Omos versus Randy Orton singles match. I'm sure that's on uh, Randy Orton's Christmas list, but uh, no AJ. Uh, apparently the official word from inside WWE is non-injury medical issue has kept him out for the past two weeks. So hopefully he's doing all right. Damian Priest beat T-Bar, 13 minutes. Great match. Best match T-Bar's ever had on the main roster. It was a it was a hardcore match, so we had uh, choke slams through tables, hard kendo stick shots while Priest was tied in the ropes, multiple chair shots. Place was going nuts for this match, and uh, Priest beat him with the reckoning, but a very, very good performance by, by T-Bar, who is a talented guy who has never had the opportunity once on the main roster to show that, although he did show it here in this match. And then the main event was Big E and Kevin Owens in a non-title match. A non-championship, whatever they call it. And it was a good match. 
Kevin Owens decided, I will crush your ribs with 85 centons from 85 different positions. And he does this, he does that. And then uh, finally there at the end, Seth Rollins ends up uh, interfering behind the referee's back. He, uh, forget what he did. But the referee was distracted. What did he do here? He attacked the Rollins, him. he punched Biggie in the face. He did something. But anyway, uh, Kevin Owens is is upset that he interfered. But, like, he's in a match. And so, you know, he's angry and he's conflicted and he yells at Seth. And he's like, ah, I got to cover this guy. And he covers him and he gets a crucifix pin and he's beaten. And so he's angry at Seth. Big E is angry at Seth. Big E is mad at Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is like, bro, I had nothing to do with this. I didn't want him to interfere. I didn't immediately take advantage of it. Big E wants to hear nothing of this, and he lays this guy out with a big ending. I don't know about you, but I watched this, and I thought, man, that was a that was a heelish move by old Big E. Was that wasn't dumb. very nice. Dumb finish. But uh, Dave liked it. No, nah, it's dumb. I like I'll tell it. you, this is why. It's their story, so they can tell these things however they want. But there were a couple of times during this show that it just stuck out like a, a sore thumb. This is a non-title match. This is a non-title match. So Kevin Owens could have won. And it would have made a lot more sense for the rest of the story. And some of this has to do with blocking. The referee... They're showing him, and he's looking at Kevin Owens. And you see the referee looking at Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens is looking at Seth Rollins, who hits Big E. Now, after all of this is done, Kevin Owens is saying, well, look, man, look, we knocked heads. And I, even though I saw him, we're, we're in a match, and I'm trying to get the... All you had to do is have the referee be in front of Kevin Owens' vision. That way, that heelish act, no, nobody would have seen it. The only person that would have known would have been the fans in Seth Rollins. Big E falls back. Kevin Owens goes over and gets the pin. Or if you didn't want to do that because it makes Big E look weak, whatever. It doesn't really make any sense to me. But, you know, either one of them, you know, kicking out and getting the victory or Kevin Owens just getting the win, it makes more sense for the story, especially with how Kevin Owens was apologizing afterwards. He shouldn't have seen Big E deliver the punch unless he's working in cahoots with Seth Rollins, which they've already established on the show. He was not. So the whole thing, the way it was blocked out and the way it ended, that didn't make any sense. And again, it's their story to tell. So they're going to tell it how they want to. And they want that, I guess, tension between the groups. But you could have created that tension in a far more uh, believable in a far more organic manner than how they did it. So that was my issue with that one. I don't know if you want to talk about that or if you want me to get into some of the other things on the show, but that was my real issue. Go for with it, that. Mike. Okay. The only other things really T bar and Roman Reigns or two T bar and Roman Reigns T bar and uh, Damien priest. Damien priest is a star. He's a future champion. My issue with this is just, why couldn't you have built this up over like four weeks and like, you know, really had die jacket something on Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns keep doing this on Damian priest where this wasn't just the blow off. And maybe we see Damian priest onto something else. I think you had something there with, with these two guys, you hear how the crowd responds. It's two big dudes is beating the hell out of each other. And I did think they've, they've missed the mark with that. That, that was a little disappointing as well too. So really other than that, Bianca and Becky, you're just going to run into this problem because Be Becky is so cheered and Bianca. One of the issues, I think, with that part of the story is you have not established Becky. You haven't really told the story and had your announcers tell the story that Becky is always able to get one over. And she's so full of herself right now. And she's got so much confidence. She's like Connor in his peak. He, uh, Ricky Hatton in his peak. She's just floating on another level where she, these things keep happening for her and she gets these victories and she's cruising. Unfortunately, they haven't told that story. And, and Bianca just looks weak every time she loses as opposed to this old vet is really getting one up on her. But if they just meet one more time, then I know Bianca's got her. Unfortunately, I think they're turning the crowd into, well, Bianca's not going to win this anyway. We see Becky on with Liv. Eh. And, and no one's really gained what they should have in all this. That's what I think. Well, that's a raw report, everybody. I'm sorry it wasn't more exciting, but uh, that's uh, that's what happened on the show. Eric Tyler Mullins wants to know if you had no restrictions at all in your diet, what food would you love to eat over and over again? Ah, uh, cup of noodles is my favorite. Your choice is cup of noodles. Uh huh. Not a steak or escargot. Nope. 
cup o noodles. Yeah, that's the only thing that doesn't upset my stomach. Well, I think the the question, Granny, is if it didn't upset your stomach, if there were no consequences, you could just eat I'm, any I food. Still, I still say cup of noodles. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.